today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these. This is a bin bag vat with a little flapping wing mechanism, okay? So it's a nice simple little puppet and it is made with just using very, very simple materials. So what you're going to need today uh, to be able to make our bat is uh, some cardboard. I've just used an old box and it's the corrugated type. Uh, you're going to need a pair of scissors, nice sharp pairs best. Uh, you're going to need some tape. I've got some masking tape and I've also got some cellar tape. You can use either of those, so no problem. Uh, you're going to need some string. I use this garden jute twine that you can get from the supermarket, but any old string will do really. Uh, you're going to need a bin bag, which is for our wings. Uh, and the other thing you're going to need is uh, some lolly sticks. So I've just used the ones that you can get from the little mini lollies, but really any lolly stick will do. Uh, and the other thing you're going to need is uh, a couple of nails or a screw, and these will act as a weight. So if you don't have anything like that lying around, then I can talk about what our other options could be to use instead. But they are what you're going to need today just to make your basic bat. And I'll start off by showing you what we're going to start making. So we'll begin today by starting to make a body. And this is a kind of uh, skeleton version of the puppet I've shown you before. It's a nice, simple design. Uh, and you can see that the mechanism here is controlled just with a piece of string like this. So nice and simple. So the first part of our puppet that we're going to make today is going to be our body, this part here. So it's a nice simple shape and it's worth me pointing out that we need to make sure that we're leaving some on the top here, this bendy bit, because it acts as our bat's neck. If I hold it to the side there you can see that when I move my bat that's moving. So we're going to start by creating our puppet body. So. I'm going to move my camera down now that so you can see uh, what I'm going to be doing. So you're going to need to have a piece of card that's uh, roughly 15 centimetres wide and about 20 centimetres long. But don't worry if it's a little bit bigger or smaller because um, this whole design is basically able to be modified to suit what, you, what you're going to be doing. So roughly 15 centimetres by 20 centimetres. And then I'm going to draw the shape of my body. So um, I'm thinking about a nice oval shape for my back body here like this. And then as I was talking about before, this, this pointy bit at the top here is going to act like your back's neck. So I'm going to make sure that I've got a nice pointy bit on top there. So you should end up with a shape a little bit like this. So the next thing we're going to do is now we've drawn our back body, I'm going to cut this out. Okay. So I have cut out my back body as you can see here I've got my the bottom of my body here and then if I was to bend this triangle over you can see that this is going to be where my my bat head is going to sit on the front like this okay so you should have your your body cut out and ready and it's nice and simple to make. and we'll come back to that later because we're going to put this to one side so we've got our body fantastic and the next thing that we need to make obviously is our bat head so our bat head is going to look something like this when it is finished, okay, before it's been painted. So this is again, it's kind of like an x-ray version of the puppet that I've got before. And it's a really simple process. The way that I've made my 3D puppet head is just through folding card. If anyone was in my last session, then you'll know that we can do an awful lot just by bending card to find faces. Uh, we used a toilet roll last time and we created a little puppet face by bending it. And this time we're just going to use a really simple piece of card to bend it into the shape of a bat. So this is our 3D version. But if I was to unfold that and show you the pattern of the head, it's going to look something like this, okay? So that's going to be what we're aiming for now. So we're going to start off by creating this shape and I'm going to show you how to do that. So you should have another piece of card which is roughly the same dimensions as the first piece, so uh, about 15 by 20 centimetres. But again, as I said, you know, your back could be a different shape to the one that I'm making. Don't worry too much, it's not specific. And what I'm going to do with my card is I'm going to think about how I want to create this 
3D shape, which I'm going to make through folding very simply like this, okay? So, if we imagine that this is, is like this, what I'm gonna do is rather than drawing the pattern, I want you to have a play around with bending the card. So the first thing we're gonna do is bend a little lip at the bottom here, that allows us to have something to stick our card onto. And then I'm gonna move and bend the card like this until it's nice and flexible. And when it's nicely flexed and able to be moved, I'm gonna see if I can bend it into a kind of, a kind of round shape here like this. So from the front, it looks like, it looks a bit like this, okay? So I'll just show you that again. I'm making sure there's a little lip at the bottom of the card here which is going to be where we can stick our puppet down. And then I'm going to bend the card up and round until I've got a kind of face shape, as you can see, like this, okay? And now I've got that all bent up, I'm able to look and see how I'm going to create a kind of more of a pointy, pointy shaped face. So if I show you the one that I've got here, you can see that I've done this exact technique. I've just folded up my puppet like that. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm cutting my puppet into a kind of more of a triangular shape. So I'm going to do that now using a pen. I'm going to make sure that I'm drawing my bat's face on the left here using a pen. So I'm just going to bend this camera down so you can see what I'm doing. So I can see that I want my bat's face around here. So I'm going to draw that here like this. I'm going to have a think about the ears of my bat as well, which I want to be here. So I'm going to make sure that the ears are drawn on. I'm going to make sure that I'm marking the middle of where the head would be so that my ears are nice and even. And I'm going to draw a set of ears onto my puppet like this. So you should be able to see now how I've managed to bend my card up nice and simple and draw the outline of what I want my bat's head to look like. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to cut it out with it folded. So you need to make sure that your scissors are going to be able to actually cut through the card here. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do it like that is because if I unfold it and try and cut it, I might get the wrong shape. So I want to try and make sure that I'm sticking to this lovely design that I've worked into. Okay, so I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut upwards into my back and I'm going to do the same the other way like so and then last but not least now I've cut this shape out I'm going to cut in and make sure I've got some ears here as well that's another reason why it's really handy to be able to open and close this at this stage because it means I can get right into that corner section there and make sure I've got a nice pair of bat ears. Okay, so you should end up with something a little bit like that. Now that I've got my head cut out, uh, going back to what that's going to look like with the other section, we've got our body here like this, and I'm going to bend this little section to create a little panel that my head can sit onto. And if I hold that together now like that, you can start to see how my bat is, is working. So you've got your head and your body, okay? Nice and simple. So we're gonna finish off this little bit of head uh, and all we're gonna do is tape it together. But I'm gonna show you a little something now. On my puppet here, you can see that I've got that shape that we went for, but I wanted to create a little bit more of a nose here because bats have this kind of little pointy face. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna create two folds on either side of our puppet's nose, okay? So I'll show you how to do that back on the other piece uh, of, of the head that we were making. So, here we are. So what I'm gonna aim to do is on this section here, either side of where you can imagine a sort of bat's nose to be here, we're gonna fold in in a really simple way like this. So I'm gonna push the card so that it's folding inwards into a kind of triangle shape like this. And it might take you a little bit of pushing and squeezing and making sure that the material is bendy enough for you to actually be able to move it. But keep going, have a little bend and a play. Remember, it's just cardboard. So if the worst comes to the worst, anything does happen and it rips, we can take it back together. And that's the nice thing about working with this material 
it's absolutely fine for it to go, you know, a little bit wonky and a little bit bendy. So I'm working with the cardboard there. I'm pushing those two edges in like this. And uh, as I'm doing that, I'm going to try and make sure that I've got a nose shape that I'm pushing my card in. So it should end up looking something like, here's the first side like this. <laughs> I've got a particularly hard type of cardboard today. So I hope you guys have got something a little bit softer. And there's the other side like that. And let's see how that's looking. Yeah, that's good. So if I show you what I'm trying to do here, you can see that I've been bending this front bit in just to create a bit more of a point. I'm really working with this tough cardboard that I've chosen to work with today. And I'm making sure that the, the bat's nose is kind of really prominent. And you can really play around here with what your face shape will look like. If you wanted to, you could make your bat's face really, really pointy. But I just want to give it a little bit of a nose. So I've bent it in here so that there's a bit of a, a central point there and a bit of a nose. OK, so you, now you should end up with a little bit more of a pointy bat face like this one. OK, the next stage is just to secure this together. So um, before you do decide to tape anything down, we want to make sure it's not too flat. So remember that you're, you can still open this up here and really work the cardboard so you've got a more 3D sort of puppety shape to your bat's face. See, so I've just opened that up a little bit so there's more of a hole here so that from the front it's a little bit more 3D than it would be. And I'm going to now stick this down using my tape. So I'm going to tape across the top here and just secure that front bit. And I'm going to do the same on the other ear here. Make sure that that's nice and secured like this. Uh, and then I'm going to put two pieces of tape on those folds that we've made either side here to ensure that our nose is nice and clear. So I'll just bend the camera down so you can see me do that a bit more easily. So I'm uh, taking these little edges here that we folded in, pinching them nice and sort of strongly to make sure that the fold stays and folding over like this. Fantastic. There we go. So you should now end up with a little bat head. OK. Has everyone got that? Is everyone nice and clear on where we are now? So we should now have our bat's head all taped together and our bat's body, uh, which means the next section that we get to go on to is our wings. So the first thing I'm going to do now is thinking about our wing section. Uh, we want to think about where our wings are going to sit on our body. So if I come back to show you uh, my skeleton puppet here like this, you can see that this is the front of the puppet with the neck. And this is where our head would attach on, as I've shown you before. So I'm going to turn this around so that you can have a really good look of this mechanism. And as I've said, it's really, really simple mechanism. OK, so what we've got here is our two lolly sticks, one either side in a V shape. And then I've attached on either side a small piece of card. And uh, there's just two holes here attached to this piece of string, which runs through the middle of the body so that when you pull, they go up together. OK. So it's a really nice, simple mechanism. I'm going to show you how we're going to make that work on our other puppet now. So taking my body, I'm going to make sure that I'm working on the back of the body. So that means this, this, this pointed section needs to be at the front here. So this is the back of my card. It's a little bit more colourful. If you are working with a box that's got patterning, sometimes that's a really useful way of remembering which is the front and the back of your puppet. Just a little tip there. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to position those two wings on. So I'm going to bend the camera down so you can see me more clearly. So here we are. Here's the back of my box, the colourful section. And I'm going to take my two, uh, my two lolly sticks that I told you about at the beginning of the workshop. And uh, if you can imagine that what we're trying to create is a kind of shoulder structure here to our puppet, I'm going to look at where my wings need to sit in relation to my body. And I think around here is a, is, a, is a good place for them to sit. If I turn that round, you can see that there's a nice amount of space for the wings there uh, and they should be able to flap nice and wide, just like this one here. They're nice and sat outwards so that when his wings extend, you can really see it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape these down nice and clear like this. So um, I'm going to start off with this one here. So I'm just using masking tape to secure the wing uh, in place. You will need to use quite a lot of tape because this is also where you're putting a lot of pressure onto your puppet. So you want to make sure that this is really securely taped down this section. And then I'm going to turn this on the other side here and I'm going to stick down the other side and make sure that once you've taped this section of your wing down that you're clear that it's nice and even 
I'm kind of following the V of the neck that I've cut here with my wings here. So you can see it's like a giant V at the front, okay? And when I'm nice and happy that these are in a, a good position, I'm gonna put a lot more tape down to ensure that they're stuck nice and, nice and clear and nice and securely. So you should end up with something a little bit like this, okay? Uh, so the next thing we need to need have uh, is, is obviously the, the second section of our wing, this, this kind of bit here that's going to be the bit that actually moves and flaps. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a pivot, a very simple pivot. As you can see, it just moves back and forth like this. Uh, so we need to cut out this section next, which is just going to be two long strips of card. They need to be something like this. They're normally, uh, the way that I think about the, the length of my wings is that I want them to be quite large, but you might want your puppet wings to be really big. You might even decide that you'd like to create a different kind of flying creature, like a dragon or a seagull. So you might want to think about what kind of wings you're making. Um, but either way, uh, you just need to create two very simple strips of card cut out from a piece of box like this one, okay? So once you've got your two strips of card, you can see how they're going to attach onto your lolly sticks like this, and they're going to move like this. So we need to create holes, and we need to create two holes at the top of our, of our wing tips. And the reason that we're gonna create two holes is that we need one set of holes to be able to attach onto the lolly stick here. And the second set of holes is so that you can attach the string on so that you can actually pull and control the movement. OK, so what I'm going to do is taking my pen. I'm going to mark two holes at the top of my wings here. The, uh, the top one is going to be for me to pull the string. And the bottom one is going to be able to attach onto uh, the lolly stick. And earlier on, I mentioned that you, uh, you're you going to be using nails. Uh, luckily, they also have a secondary use, which is a really useful way of us creating our holes in our cardboard. Obviously, do be very careful when you're using any sharps like this. Uh, make sure that you're always holding it downward and you're making sure with the sharp end that it's nowhere near anything because you don't want to hurt yourself. So I'm going to very carefully take my nail uh, and I'm going to lay my cardboard on top of each other to make sure that the holes are in exactly the same place. And then I'm going to very carefully uh, just puncture through to create my hole. Okay, first hole. That's the bottom one where we're going to attach it onto our lolly stick and now I'm going to do the top one which is the the string pulling section. So again nice and carefully puncturing through twice. If you've got some blue tack or a rubber that's a really really good idea. Unfortunately I've run out of blue tack so I don't have that today but yes and there's our top hole. Nice. So you've now got your body and you've now got the tops of your wings so we need to attach these on uh, and the way we're going to do that is rather than trying to create a hole in our lolly stick which is made of wood we're just going to cut a little slit with our scissors so um, you need to do this quite carefully uh, because you don't want to split your lolly stick but just a reminder that if it does split for any reason then you can always just tape it back up again similarly with the card it's a material that it doesn't really matter too much if it breaks and hopefully in this weather you've got a nice ready supply of ice lollies if you do need any more so I'm just going to take my scissors now and I'm going to make a very, very careful small cut. And I'm going to cut to about half a centimetre to maximum a centimetre into the top. OK, and you can see that lolly sticks have that, that tendency to just split. So it's actually perfect. You want to work with that and you want to split the lolly stick. If it does split further, as I said, don't worry at all. We can just tape it up. So I'm going to do the same on the other side now. Okay. And uh, perfect. So what's happened is mine has actually split in a way that I don't like, but it's okay. Uh, as I said, it doesn't really matter. If this does happen to any of you at home, just grab a little bit of your tape and uh, make sure that about half a centimetre down, you are securing it back up. Uh, so make sure that it can't actually break because that's what we're trying to avoid. So I'm just taping it up like a plaster. And I know that now I'm going to be able to still use this lolly stick. And the reason that we've made a cut in here is that I'm going to slide a little piece of string in rather than trying to create a hole. So um, we're going to be able to attach the string into the top of the lolly stick and then attach over the top 
our wing. So that's the thing I'm going to do next. I'm going to get a little bit of my uh, garden string here. Don't need a lot, just enough here. And uh, a little tip. Sometimes this string frays a little bit. As you can see, it's spun around like this. And, and this is the kind of string that tends to fray and it's very difficult to kind of thread it through a bit like your laces. So what I tend to do is uh, when I'm threading it through, I spin it to make, make it a little bit easier to get through whatever hole I've created. Uh, or I can use my nail to make sure that it's pushed through the hole effectively. So I'm going back to my wings, here we are. And I've got my piece of string. So I'm going to literally pull my piece of string through that crack that we've just made with our scissors. So you're literally holding a piece of string by pinching it together, nice and simple. And I'm going to make sure that I've got enough string to be able to thread all the way through to my wing. And if the neck is at the front here, you want the wings to just be at the back. And that's just so that the, it doesn't really matter if they're at the front, but it's a little bit neater if that wing's at the back there. So I'm going to thread on the bottom hole, make sure that you're using this one because we need to have that top one free for the string. I'm going to thread this through. Bottom hole like that. And you know, as, as I'm finding here, that's not quite big enough. So I'm going to just use this to open up that hole a little bit more. Maybe you could use a biro as well. Just make sure you can get the string through nice and easily. Okay. So you should end up with this nice and threaded through on this side, like this. Ah, sorry, you can see the bottom of my computer there. There we go. <laughs> there we are. And we'll do the same on the other side. So once again, I'm going to pull the string through this little crack here. It might take a little bit of fiddling around to make sure that you've got the right amount of string pulled through. And then I'm going to take my other piece of wing, open that hole up a little bit. And you can see that I'm now going to thread that through here. <laughs> and as I said, if you are struggling with threading that string through, like that. There we go. So what you should end up with is your two bits of card on. We're going to now knot either side here. We want to make a knot at the front and a knot at the back to make sure that this can't come out. Make sure your knot is really nice and as tight to the front as it can be so that you are making sure that it's holding it in place and the same on the back. You want to make sure your knot is nice and tightly at the front here like this. You can see that's now attached on. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Knot at the front. And knot at the back. You can see my wing just came out there because um, it's pulled out of the tape, but it's actually fine if it does that. You can just secure it around the top here. Now that you've got your, your wings attached on like this, we're gonna just cut this excess string off because we don't really need it to be there. So I'm gonna trim this so you've just got a knot either side. And you should be left with two moving arms. You've created two pivots there for your puppet's wings, okay? So we have successfully managed to attach our wings on and we know that now we are almost halfway really with our bat because we've got our head, we've got our body and we've got our wings in place and you can see how it's all coming together quite nicely at this stage. So the next thing we need to do is obviously attach on our little mechanism and the way that we're going to do that is we want to be able to tie our, a one long piece of string through these two holes here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that whatever string I cut is at least the length of the body doubled, okay? So from here to here, uh, like a V, okay? So um, if I show you down here how I'm measuring that. 
I'm going to make sure I've got string that's going to go all the way down there and back up again. And you can be a little bit generous. You can make sure you've got too much string. Okay. And then turning my puppet over like this so that I can see where my top holes are. I'm going to tie a knot in either side. So I'm going to make sure that my string is threaded through. One side like this. And I'm just going to tie the knot to the side here, just a really simple half hitch, which is the beginning of when you tie your shoelaces, so nothing too fancy. So right over left and then left over right, just to make sure that it's in place like this. You should have one knot. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, okay? So I'm looping this up back over this long piece of string and I'm going to tie through this other hole here on this side. Again, just a nice simple knot, make sure it's nice and attached. Which means now you have attached your string on either side like this, you should be able to see that if you pull your string, your puppets are gonna move. And at the moment, they're kind of going all over the place. You can see it looks a bit like a traffic conductor. You can pull one side and the other, but really what we want to ensure is that we have an even movement like this. So the way that we're gonna make sure that our back puppet has an even movement is that if I show you back onto my example piece here, I've created just a little cardboard tube so that the string can run down into it and you can pull it evenly like this, okay? So that's the next thing we're gonna do here. We're gonna roll up a little piece of cardboard to create a tube, something a little bit like this. So I've just, as you can see, I've just rolled the cardboard up, taped it so that it's uh, attached. And that means that I can then, going back to my puppet here, I can mount it on the back of the puppet and thread. Yeah, I can see some people are really doing really well. They've created their puppet and I can see that you've got an excellent mechanism. So anyone that's making along with us right now, well done. Uh, you're almost ahead of me. So I shall actually try and get a little bit closer so that we can uh, move on to the next section. So I'm, uh, I'm putting, in my, uh, putting my cardboard tube here and I'm gonna tape it into place so that it's mounted. Again, you might wanna make sure that this is really taped down nice and strong so that it's not gonna go anywhere when you're pulling it. And then taking your piece of string, you want to thread through the hole so that it comes out the other side, like this. And then this is when you can have a little play around with the, uh, the tension on your puppet. But you can see now that because I've put it through a tube, when I pull the bottom here, my wings are working beautifully, okay? So, if you've managed to do that, congratulations, you've made your first really simple puppet mechanism. Uh, well done. We've created this, but we're missing something. Obviously our bat needs to have lovely leathery wings. Uh, and obviously the thing that we've got around the house that looks just like a bat wing is our bin bag. So what we want to do is make sure that we're cutting enough bin bag to allow our bat's wings to actually extend all the way up like this. And as you can see on my one, I've got a little bit gathered in the corner here. Um, what will happen is if you cut too little, then it might restrict the bat wing movement. So you wanna make sure you've kind of got a lovely baggy bit of bag at the back here. And it also allows that lovely flapping noise when you move your puppet. So um, what we're gonna do is um, we're going to start off by measuring our wingspan. So I'll show you that back down on the table. Okay. So I've got my bat here and I've got my bin bag and I'm going to open my bin bag out so that I can see the corners. Sorry for the noise, I'm going to give it a little shake. Okay, so when you've got your bin bag open like this, you want to find a corner at the top, okay? 
and we're going to lay our bin bag out and taking our puppet like this I want you to open the wingspan and I want you to think about the shape of the wing it's kind of like a triangular shape with a little oval here okay so what we're going to do is making sure that we've got our bin bag folded over we're going to cut them together and that means you'll have exactly the sh the same pattern wing okay so you can see that this is the shape I want so I'm going to cut down here and then I'm going to cut that oval shape that we were looking for with the wing And so what you've got now is your two wings and you want to make sure if I open this up that we're going to cut down the middle and you can already see that this looks a little bit like a bat. I'm going to cut down the middle here so that now if I was to lay my puppet here like this you can see that the wings are going to be attached on and they've got a lovely bat like shape now um, on my puppet what I've also done is I've, I've had a look and I've cut a kind of like spiked shape for the wing here because bats have these amazing hands that kind of move like this so this is your opportunity to kind of like think about the shape that you might want your wing to be as you're looking at your puppet but um, the first thing we're going to do is obviously stick this down so I'm going to I've shown you where you want your wings to be but obviously we want the wing to be attached onto the front so I'm going to stick this over the front of the puppet like this. Okay, so I'm going to turn my puppet over and I'm going to lay the wing out and now is when I'm going to be able to actually attach it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over the top of the wing here and I've, I've switched from using my, uh, my masking tape at this point to using my sellotape and that's just so that you can you don't have to see the tape. So I'm going to take my sellotape and I'm going to attach that down there like this and I'm going to do the same thing at the back here. So what I'm making sure is that my wing is attached onto the edge here and then it's coming around the back of the top of our lolly stick so that it's kind of covering the mechanism. Uh, and this isn't a fine art. I mean, you guys can have a little play around. You basically want to make sure that you cannot see that little bit of wing neck here. So it's completely covered up by your bag. So if I'm looking at the front like this, there we go. I'm looking at the front of my puppet. You can see the neck's facing me. And I want to make sure that I'm covering up my, my puppet wing. So what I'm going to do is take the wing at the front to wrap over this top section here so that you're covering up the wing like that. Is that nice and clear? Is that okay? Yeah? So I'll show you again. So I'm just gonna take this piece of bin bag, wrap it over the top of my wing, and then I'm gonna fix it at the back so that you can't really see it like this. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna make sure that this top section here is, so this bit here is now gonna be covered up as well. You see how I've got that little bit of mechanism still showing? I wanna make sure that's covered up by my bin bag. But I don't want to stick my 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 pivot. I don't want to I don't want to restrict any movement in the wing. Okay, so I'm making sure that when I am sticking my bag down, I'm not like going over that bit of string or attaching in this part here because otherwise my my wing won't be able to flap very well. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got a nice amount of movement in my pocket. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the wing to the back here and I'm going to attach it down. Okay. Which part of the bin bag did you cover the um, lollipop stick up with? Um, I just basically used any excess here, Daisy. Yeah, basically that's it. So I pull it up to the top like a jumper and basically it's no fine art. You just need to kind of fold it over um, so that it's just covered. I mean, if you, if you don't, if you're not able to do that, as long as it's attached along this top bit here, and along the body then you could always just paint your stick as well but that looks really good yeah that's fantastic well done really good job yeah you just need to fold it over the top there the, the basic thing that we're trying to achieve here guys is that we want to try and cover up 
our mechanism so that you can't see it so well. And you want to make sure at the front, the wing is along the back of the body here. So that means that you've got a nice blank canvas to be able to paint later. That's essentially why we've, we've done that so that you can create your kind of your colored bat or your whatever your creature is. But you should end up with something a little bit like this so that then you can pull the excess wing in like that. And when, when you start to look, you should be able to pull and it's gonna move. But as you can see with mine, it's not moving very much. And the reason is, is that these parts here are very, very light. And this is where our very trusty little nails are gonna come in. Now, puppets need to have weight. Uh, and the reason they need to have weight is that if they're too light, then they're not gonna have good movement. So we always wanna make sure that we weight them in the right place. And in, uh, in this bat's instance, we wanna make sure that it's the wing that's weighted so that the wing is gonna fall back down again. So what I'm doing is I'm taking some nails because they're quite heavy. But again, as I said, you could always use a screw or if you don't have anything like that, you could use just a penny and, uh, and that's nice and heavy. And I'm gonna find the end of my bat's wing roughly here, and I'm gonna stick the nail onto it. So um, you can either open your wing back up to reveal the edge of your, of your wing here, or if you've really stuck it down, then it could just pop it over the top as long as it's at the back. But I'm now gonna stick my nail along this little section. So, okay. And this is really fun because you can now discover and play around with the weight of your, of your puppet. You might need to put on a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on how big your bat is or your creature. But it should, the difference should be that you can see that once I've added a little bit of weight onto this side, now if I pull the wing, you see how it's starting to move a little bit more? And this mechanism you need to sort of play around with and make sure that it's gonna actually bend effectively and move. So you're always working with the material and ensuring that your puppet is going to actually move. That's what you want it to do. So you can see how this one's working really, really well because I've weighted it. This one's not moving so good. So we're going to add some weight onto this one too. So again, I'm going to reveal the end of my, my wing like this, and I'm going to take my nail, and I'm going to attach it on. And then I can cover this back up again. And I'm gonna make sure that my wings have got enough, uh, enough excess. And let's see how that sits now. So I've put a nail on either side now. So theoretically, yeah, when I'm now pulling, you can see that it's, it's moving, but there's still a little bit of something going on over here. So I'm playing around with the bag. I'm moving around with the bag until I get a really nice sense of it flapping evenly. There we go. Okay, so have a little play. Remember that when we're creating a puppet, it's not a sculpture, it's a moving, moving object. And we want to make sure that it moves correctly. So sometimes these elements, particularly these joints or these hinges that have a moving part, are the bits that we need to focus on for a little bit longer. So if you get to this stage and you're not quite seeing the results you want, have a little bit of patience and play around. It could be that you need to add more weight. It could be that you've sellotaped over a section that needs to move. Maybe you need to make sure that your string is still clear. So at this point of your puppet making, just have a look through everything and check have I made sure that nothing is over sticking have I made sure I've got enough weight and then you should be able to have a real good play and see that you can get this flapping mechanism okay what you can do is um, at this stage you can cut your wings into a nice shape like I have on my one I tried to put a little bit more of a kind of you can see here that he's got a little bit more uh, of a flappy part here and I've just cut this to shape. So that's something you can do. You could rag it up your, up your wings. You could even play around with a lighter if you've got one or a candle and see if you could create texture onto this plastic bag. It does shrink a little bit. So make sure you don't send your puppet up in flames if you're practicing with any of those kinds of techniques. But there's lots of things you can do to create a more kind of artistic finish on your bat wing. Um, but going back to our head now, we're gonna attach that on. So we've got our front section here. And what I'm gonna do is you can see that I've bent a little section at the, uh, at, the, at the top of our triangle here so that there's almost a flat plane for me to be able to attach my puppet head onto which is just here. So I'm going to have a look at my head and I'm going to see where exactly I want it to sit and on my puppet I'm kind of attaching it just at the at the top of the ears here okay and once I've got that position I'm going to uh, if you excuse me flip here like this and I'm going to tape this section of my puppet so I'll show you down on the table. So here it is, 
Here's the head like this. I'm going to get my tape. I'm going to make sure that my head is positioned exactly where I want it to be. And uh, I'm going to fix it on like this. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. I'm now going to bend my puppet head forward, okay? And I want to make sure that it's also going to be able to be affixed on at the back here too. So I'm going to put a piece of tape just across here to make sure that it's nice and secure. You can even like run it up the back of the ears if you want to like this. Just make sure it's basically taped on. because You don't want your head to go flying off. Okay. And once you've done that, you want to just make sure that you're really, again, you're working this cardboard so that it's got a nice amount of movement so that when you bob up and down like this, your bat head has a nice amount of movement. So that, that means when you come to finally having a go on your puppet, you've got it all ready like this and you can start to see you've got a flapping, a flapping bin bag bat. Here it is. So obviously what we've done is left this whole bit uh, cardboard so that um, you can work with your own paints at home. And I've just used some basic acrylics. I've got some, uh, got some black. I've got a little bit of a kind of uh, slightly iridescent copper, which allows you to see some, some nice fur strokes. Um, and then I used a, a, a yellow ochre for the eyes, but you might have some things you could use for the eyes instead. Maybe you've got some, some, some fake eyes, you know, that would be ideal. Or if not, you could use like acorn cups or something natural. Have a little play and see what you can actually come up with. Um, you've also now got a pattern to be able to make a, a range of flying creatures because all you need to know is this very, very simple, this very, very simple mechanism here. So now you've got that in your arsenal, then you're able to make a, a range of different kind of flying puppets. But I really hope that um, if you have been making along today that you can now spend a little bit of time at home and, and paint your creature and show us your, uh, your end bin bag back. But yeah, there you go. So that is the end of our workshop today. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed it. 